With you is where I belong, oh. 
out of the scripture, the 16th chapter of Matthew, Jesus asks a very important question. And here in Matthew 16, Father, in Jesus' name, bless your word, bless your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Matthew 16, verse 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesar of Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some said that thou art John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah's, uh, uh, Jeremiah, one of the prophets. And he said unto them, But who say ye that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, by Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, that whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I, I want to speak into your spirit this morning, those who hear and those who listen to us. You must know him to make him known. All right. All right. We must know him to make him known. Yes. You may be seated, President Amen. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16, is very unique because Jesus, praise the name of the Lord, was addressed by some of the religious leaders of his time, the Pharisees and Sadducees. It's very unique because they had different beliefs, but they came together against Jesus. Amen. They would fight among themselves, but they unified to stand against Jesus. And, and they, they, they began to question him, asking him about sign from heaven. Jesus began to approach them in a very unique way. He says, now, when evening came, you said there would be fair weather and for the sky is red. You can, in other words, you can tell the seasons, the natural season. You can tell when the, it's going to rain or you can tell when the, the sun's going to come out. And we listen to the news reports all the time. And the weatherman says, storm is coming or this is happening or this is happening. But then Jesus gives them a very unique answer, a very powerful answer. He said, now you can discern the natural side, but yet you can't discern the times you live in. As the believer, we must discern the time that we're living in. We must discern that the fact that we're living in perilous time, the last day, that men are lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. They love pleasure. Praise the name of the Lord. They, 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 they love power. They love money. They love stuff. And, and you have to be very careful because we live in a time now that people will attach themselves to you, not because of who you are, but because of what they can get from you. All right, come on, Pastor. Come on now. And so we, we, we have to, as spirit-filled believers, we have to become more spiritual aware of our surroundings. Mm -hmm. That's what the Bible says, the sons of God is led how? By the Spirit of God. Then he goes on to say, the spirit bear witness that we are who? Children of God. We must become more spiritual aware of who we are as children of God. And discerning the times we're living in. In fact, Jesus called them a wicked and adulterous generation. There were times that Jesus, when he was on the boat, praise the name of the Lord, he has commanded them to go to the other side. Praise the name of the Lord. And, uh, he had just fed the mother too. This is not time he's on the boat, but he went to prayer. 
after Jesus had finished ministry, he goes to pray. Many times we finish ministry and we go to the restaurant. But Jesus goes to pray. Jesus goes into the mountain. He stays all night in prayer. And there, there on the, in, on the sea, uh, we have a commission from him to go to the other side. But they're out there fighting the storm. So maybe the reason why we fight so many storms is because we are not prayerful enough. He finished ministering and he goes to prayer. And they are with him, helping in ministry, but they go to save. And then when they're out there fighting the storm, the Bible said Jesus come walking on the water. And they thought it was a ghost, but they recognized who he was. And Peter said, Lord, if it be you, can it bid me to come? All right. And the Bible says that Jesus said, Come. Jesus said, come. Now, you remember, there's 12 up on the boat, but only one got out. We complain about the one getting out, but don't you know all it takes is one plus God? All right. All right. Come on now. Sometimes we wait on the crowd to give us confirmation on who we are, but you got to quit waiting on the crowd to give you confirmation. When God said, move, it's time for us to move. The Bible says that people start walking on the water. Praise the name of the Lord. Ah, in other words, it took faith to get out of that boat on, in the storm. And when he got out, started walking on the water. He was walking on the water until he lost sight of Jesus. And he started looking at the surroundings. He started looking at the surroundings. And many of us failed, not because we didn't hear the command of God, not because we didn't respond when he calls us. The reason why many of us got failing is because we lose sight of him. And we start looking at what's going on around us. But if we're going to know him and make him known, we have to understand he's got power over everything. And the Bible says that 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 Peter began to cry out, Lord, help Satan. And Jesus picked his head back up. And when he got in the boat, the, the storm ceased. So that tells me something. The storm really wasn't for Jesus. The storm was for the apostles, yeah. the disciples. And a lot of times storms come in your life not because God sent the storm, but he's testing our faith. He's trying to get us to move to the next level. Right. Praise he's trying to get us to soar to the next height. Praise the name of the Lord. I talked to you about the eagles earlier. Present up in some other message, but I, I hope you don't get mad, mad if I re-emphasize some things about the eagle because one thing they said about an eagle, when the storm comes, the eagle don't do like other birds and run and hide. He flies into the storm. He has an attitude. Why? He stretch out. Why? He stretch his wings out. We got to learn to stretch out on faith in the anointing and the power of God that's inside of us. All right. Glory to God. And the Bible says... Uh, it talks about the fact that when he got back in the boat, praise the name of the Lord, the song see, and they fell down to worship him and said, oh, it's got to be the Son of God. Praise the name of the Lord. What would it take for us to wake up as believers and recognize that we got Christ in us, the hope of glory? Hallelujah. What would it take for, for more storms to come, more situations to come, that the church will rise up and take our rightful place in the kingdom of God? Because the Bible said, no weapon form against us shall be able to prosper. The Bible said, great is he that's in me and he that's in the world. Praise the name of the Lord. We got to quit waiting on the crowd and stand out. Praise the name of the Lord. What make a look about an eagle? An eagle don't fly with any bird. He only fly with another eagle. All right. That's right. My God. Praise the name of the Lord. Sit down and lift your hands. Break in the sanctuary and say, Lord, I just want to fly like an eagle. Hallelujah. Oh, Glory to God. Yeah. Amen. I don't want to hang around with pigeons because you know what they do. <laughs> they just get high enough to drop stuff on your head. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. I don't want to hang with buzzards because all they eat is dead stuff. That's right. I don't want to hang with turkeys because all they keep their head down on too much. And I can't show sure hang with the chickens all they do is walk around and gobble all day. I want to be up there. And they said what the eagle does, his vision is so clear, he can see five miles away from him. Jesus, my God. He can see his prey. And one thing I love about an eagle, this is what I, one thing that really stuck out me about an eagle, is that eagle never eat anything dead. We got to quit eating dead stuff. All right, 
We got to quit eating stuff people throw at you and, and say it's the gospel, but we know it's dead. We got to quit putting things in our spirit that cause us to be depressed. We got to quit putting things in our spirit that cause us to be frustrated. We got to quit listening to things that cause us not to give God the glory He deserves. We got to quit eating dead stuff. Tell somebody that dead stuff got to go. Glory to God. It sounds good, but it kills your spirit. It's, it, it tastes good, but it kills your spirit. Y'all ain't gonna help me. That's why God told one of the prophets, when you eat the word, it's going to be bitter in your mouth, but it's going to be sweet in your stomach. So sometimes when you eat the word of God, it's bitter to you because it's hard to swallow sometimes. Can I, keep, can I just be honest with you for a moment? Praise the name of the Lord. I know what it is, amen, to be able to swallow what we call that humble pie. That's all right. And sometimes God gives you a humble pie pill with no water. And he said, you got to get it in you. Praise the name, you hurt, but you got to get it in you. But once you get it in you, it's going to deliver you. That's the power of the word of God. The power of the word of God. Why? Because it's Christ in us. Why? Because the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Pills even the very sin of body, soul, and spirit. The word of God can reach where no one else can go. Why? Because Christ is the word. He was the manifestation of the word of God. Because the Bible said the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. When you get Christ in you, you got Lord. grace and truth inside of you. Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank Glory you. to God. So we got to come to know this God that we call our salvation. He is our salvation. He is our deliverer. Lord. He is our Savior. He is our Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. I no doubt in my mind, praise the name of the Lord. That man that was sitting at the pool of a thousand, waiting for 38 years to get healed. And every time he tried to get healed, he said, somebody step in front of me. But aren't you glad? Hallelujah. You ain't got to wait on whether somebody oh, step in front of you or not. Praise the Lord. But the Bible oh, said when Jesus showed up. Jesus is going to ask him one question. Do you want to be delivered? Do you want to be healed? I would ask one question I want to ask the church this morning. Do you want to go to the next level? Do you want to rise to the next level in your name of God? Are you satisfied sitting there complaining? Are you satisfied sitting who ain't going to help you? Are you satisfied crying about who ain't praying for you? Are you satisfied sitting there worrying about who friend you have? How many friends you done lost? Are you ready to rise up in the power of your own? I said, do you want to be healed? And he began to make all these excuses. Well, you know, Lord, I've been here, but somebody's always stepping in front of me. They always beat me to the punch. He said, I ain't asked you that. All right. Come on now. Pay attention to the question. The question is, do you want to be healed? Yeah, right. The question is, hey, how many folk don't reject you? And the question is not how many folk don't like you. The question is not how many folk don't step over you. The question is, do you want to rise up? Yeah. The question is, do you want to live in the anointing of God? The question is, do you really want to know who I am? That's the real question. We got to quit complaining about other folk and ask us the real question. Because the real question is, do I really want to know him? Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He said, Lord, Jesus said, rise up, man. Take up your bed and walk. While others are waiting on the pool, you got me. While others are waiting on a sign, you got Jesus. But others are waiting on a breakthrough. You already got the breakthrough because you got the God of salvation living inside of you. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Praise the name of the Lord. So Jesus is coming to the, the, the coast of Philippi. He asked a question to his disciples because he knew they were struggling. He knew they, were, they had to struggle because they grew up in a religious society. They grew up in a, in a society that taught them religion but didn't taught them relationship. They grew up in a society that they knew the law but didn't have no relationship. They, 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 they was expecting a savior and we're growing up in the same type of world today. We got to be careful that we don't let religion break us down and we forget that who we really are and it's all about our relationship with Jesus Christ. It's because if we have this relationship with Jesus Christ and we've been born of God, we will overcome the world and this is going to overcome the world what? Even our faith. And that's why Peter said you got to repent of your sin no, you got to turn away from sin why? And come back to God. He that baptized into Christ should do what? Put on Christ. That's why Peter, when he got up on the day of Pentecost, he preached this awesome sermon. And the Bible said 3,000 souls came to him. And they asked him, the court, what shall we do to be saved? He said, you got to be baptized in the name of Jesus 
pray for the mission of sin and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I ask, I know the world has changed. I know religion, praise the Lord. I ain't got Bible schools out there, but the word of God is still the word of God. Praise the name of the Lord. There's the one way of God, and that's through Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible says salvation is in none other but the name of Jesus Christ. You got to understand who lives inside of you. When you get the Holy Ghost, you got Christ in you. Praise the name of the Lord. That's why Jesus says when he was on the earth, he said, I'm in the Father, the Father's in me. He said, Behold, I'll be where? In you. It's Christ in us. Praise the name of the Lord. That's your hope. It's Christ in us. Praise the name of the Lord. I know in, in the Bible says, in, I think it's in Romans 13, he said, there's no other power but of God. But the Bible said, Jesus, when he rose from the grave, he said, all power. All power. In word. heaven and earth is in my hand. That's what Jesus said. Praise right. the name of the Lord. So that tells me, uh, praise the Lord, according to the scriptures, uh-huh. amen, that Jesus and God was the same. Uh-huh. The Bible uh-huh. said deep God was in, in Christ, reconciling the world where? Back to us. Back to himself. Praise the name. Not imputing our trespasses. Not charging us. Uh-huh. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, what an awesome Savior we serve. Uh-huh. No, praise the Lord. Because uh-huh. if God, if God had not gotten rid of your bad record, Right. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. 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 If God had not wiped yeah. away your bad record, because yeah. yeah. some of us come to church that night, we got good records. Yeah. 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 It's the name of the Lord. Yeah. 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 It's because of what Jesus did. Yeah. Yeah. All of us can come and worship Him in spirit and in truth. And nobody got a right to look at nobody's face. Right. 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 Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Your clothes ain't going to save you. That's right. But your salvation with Jesus yes, will. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Don't get caught up because my folk look. Don't get caught up because I ran this, you know, uh-huh. step part of protocol. Yeah. Right. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. It's up to me. I dress like Brother John every day. <laughs> but I couldn't get away with it. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And I want the word of God to be effective. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. All right. Praise the name of the Lord. See, I'm not caught up in a bunch of stuff. What I'm caught up in is that we got to build this relationship with Jesus Christ and come to know him so we can make him known. Make it known in the way we walk. Make it known in how we treat people. Make it known how we walk and live and love one another. That's what I'm talking about. Anybody can talk a good game. Can, can I be real for a moment? Can't be real, brother. You play some sports. That's, right. and that's mothers who play it in here. Praise the Lord. You know, you got folk who talk a real good game, but when they get on the court, they ain't got no game. Right. That's right. Praise the name of the Lord. We got to we be sure that, amen, we in the house of God and we talking a good game, but when folks see us, they find out we ain't got no game. All right. Come on, Pastor. Because we ain't got no light to back it All up. Right. Praise that's the name right. of the Lord. So Jesus asked him a question. Why? And he told him to beware of the of, of the of the of the doctrine of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Beware of the living of them. Praise the Lord. They didn't understand it at first, but then they caught it later. He's talking about their teaching. You got to watch who you listen to. You got to watch who put in your spirit. You got to watch what you right. that put in your praise the Lord. I ain't got nothing against no one, but praise right. the name of the Lord. But you got well, listen, I'm very careful who I'm listening That's to. That's right. Come praise on. the name of the Lord. Anybody can tell me God will bless me from heaven. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to know how to walk with God. All right. I want to know how to hear from yes, God. Lord. I want to know when God is talking. Praise the Lord. Yes, and not someone else. Praise the Lord. Right. Because sometimes we're like a prophet I talked about last Sunday. Praise the name of the Lord. What happened? When he gets on the mountain, praise the Lord. And God told him, I want to talk to you. And the Bible says, guess what? The, 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 earth, the, earth, the wind blew. And the rocks was falling. The earthquake came. The fire fall. But the Bible said, God would not in any of it. But when he heard the still small voice, praise the Lord, you got to understand what it's saying. The problem with most of us as believers, we got too much clutter going on, so when God's talking, we can't hear him. I wish somebody would just shout, get rid of the club, get rid of the club, so we can hear God. Get rid of the club, so we can hear the voice of God. Get rid of the club, so we can hear the word of God. Praise the Lord. Why? Because when God speaks to his saints, he speaks through the spirit. He don't speak through the flesh. Amen. The flesh is just what? A tool. The flesh is just a house that we live in. That's all this is. This body going back to the dust. Your Holy Spirit is now embedded in your soul, in your spirit, man. That's what God is going to bring back. Praise the Lord. That's what you won't say. This body, you ain't going to save this flesh. That's right. Amen. Amen. And folks are dying on what's this flesh. Right. Praise the Lord. And it's going to die anyway. Yeah. Why? Because dust thou heart and dust thou shall return. That's right. 
Praise the name of the Lord. We got to put them in our minds and in our hearts that we got to need a relationship with Jesus Christ. Yes, yes. Praise the name. And we got to die daily. Paul said, I got to die daily. Why? Because if I don't die daily, guess what will happen? My old nature will rise back up. That's right. President, and my old nature rise up, I develop a common mind state again. And if I go back into carnality, I can't understand the spirit. Because the common mind and the spirit mind are into me against one another. It's hostile. Praise the Lord. Why? Because your flesh realized one principle. Your flesh realized if the spirit take over, he can't get what he wants. Uh, are y'all still with me? Yeah, the name of the Lord. See, this flesh realized something. So Jesus had to deal with them because he understood. I got a charge on your life. I got something I want you to do. But if you don't die to this flesh, you'll never fulfill it. And the, and the issue is, the number one issue is, you got to understand who I am. Because if you don't understand who I am, praise the name of the Lord, you're going to allow other folk to get you off a track. That's right. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's why Paul said, in this flesh, this flesh man, he said, I got to put my flesh under subjection. Because why? He said, but the thing that I wouldn't do, right. I find myself not doing. All right. Can I get a witness in All the right. house? Right. Amen. You know, what, you know what the Holy Spirit told you to pray? Right. <laughs> you know it. You know it. You know what the Holy Spirit told you to pray? What you wanted to do. Instead of pray, you wanted to play. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. First of all, I'm not saying plan is wrong, but I'm not saying to teach us how to follow the Spirit. We got to be in touch with the Spirit of God. We got to learn how to hear the voice of God when God is talking to us. So Jesus had to challenge them because he knew they were listening to what folk were saying in the marketplace. Why? Because you got to understand. Amen. Some of them were fishermen. They left their business. Can you market? Can you imagine the gossip? Can, can, you don't mind, you mind if I don't scream and they do. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can you imagine the gossip going on? They done left their business and following that man. <laughs> huh? they, they, guess what? Fishermen, back then, fishermen made good money. They, they walk off from entrepreneurship just to follow Jesus. Peter was married. He was married. And I'm sure some of the others would have had wives too. It, it wasn't that they forsook their wives a home, but they, they left their. Can you imagine what the wife is saying? Man, we got to pay bills. Can I bring the 21st century? Come on, <laughs> you, you did what? You went what? You mean it? Spot. He covered a whole lot of stuff. Oh, 
And so Jesus now had to get them to understand, listen, I got to get some things out of your mindset of listening to what they say about me. Because it's important that if you're going to preach this gospel, you will have to understand who I am because I am the gospel. You got to understand why I came into the world. I didn't come into the world to condemn the world. I came into the world that the world might be saved. Therefore, you listen yes, to a religion that will condemn folk. You listen to a religion that will change the world. And you listen to all these things. But I didn't come to condemn the world. No, no. I didn't come to kill the, the dope head. I come to change him. I broke the hope. I put him in the law. I didn't come to kill the prostitute. I came to change her so her life can be prosperous in the kingdom. You remember the woman that was caught in adultery? I always ask the question, what was the news? It's very unique how we look at the things of God. Very unique how we see. When, when you start looking through the eyes of God and through the eyes of Jesus Christ, then you understand that the depths of God's love. That's why we got to come to know Him. We must come to know Him. We got to come to know His heart. Praise the name of the Lord. Because you remember when Jesus was feeding the mother too. I talked about that earlier. And the disciple wanted to send them away. But the Bible said he saw, he looked at it and had compassion. The church got to get back to having compassion. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. This ain't the time to throw stones at nobody. This ain't the time to beat them folk because they fall out. Thank you, Jesus. But this is time to help folk up. This is the time to encourage folk. Praise the name of the Lord. People are hurting. People are, are, are struggling with their faith. Where's the church? We must be to stand out. Praise the Lord. We must be the one that makes it different. We got to be that eagle. Say, yeah, I see the storm, but we're going to fly. We're going to stretch out. Praise the name of the Lord. We have to be making our nests among the chickens. Let's build in the high places. Thank you, Jesus. Let's, be, let's build in the high places so we can see. Because you have to understand, the higher up you are, the further your vision. Amen. My God. And many of us can't see far because we're hanging down there. Amen. We're hanging down there with folk with bad attitudes. Right. We're hanging down there with folk who ain't got no hope. Amen. We're hanging down there with folks that child, I wouldn't do that. Child, I, you don't take on that to serve God. All right, come on, man. You're hanging down there. You see, you're hanging down there. But when you start walking with Christ, Thank you realize, you know, it ain't, that, that's not them. That's the enemy that doesn't blind their mind. Right. And so we have to understand to show them what really walking with God is all about. They have to see the anointing of God in our life. Thank they have to see the power of God working out in us. Praise the Lord. Anybody, like I say, anybody can talk a good game. Yes. That's right. Yes. But it's time for the church to rise up. Thank and start caring for one another. Yes. Praying for one another. Yes. Praise yes. the name of the Lord. And Jesus asked them this question. He came to the sea, to, to Caesar Philippi, which is which is about northeast of the Sea of Galilee. And, and he comes in, he asks them this question. Who do men say I the son of man and because he knew they were listening? He knew, he knew, he knew, he knew. He knew they were hearing what the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and all the religious leaders and the community was talking about them. Man, you done left your job, you crazy. Child. You, you, you know, well, let me bring it home. Child, we used to get high together, man. You don't want to get high no more. You better come on through here. Come on, Pastor. No, let me bring it home, man. Don't let me look like I'm crazy. Come on, now. You crazy. Come on, Pastor. Come on. Tell the truth. Come on. We used to go to the club, man. We didn't want to go to the club. Now, y'all might have cut your children deal, but they probably know more than I know anyway. Right. 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 Girl, you know, we used to get down, girl. You don't know, get down. Right. Right. Chop, chop. Listen, my body's a temple of the Holy Ghost. You don't got saved. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You don't got saved. You don't say, Tell me all that salvation. Notice, notice, I'm bringing home a little bit closer. All that church wants is your money. That's a big All that church wants is your money. But you wouldn't cry about your money when you were buying Bud Light. Come on, man. You wouldn't cry about your money when you were buying them cigarettes. You wouldn't cry about your money when you were buying them pills. You wouldn't cry about your money when you were getting a hotel room. See that's 
just took it in. So Jesus knew they were listening to stuff. So he had, he had to really address that issue. The real issue is you listen to the wrong conversation. You need to bring your focus back over here and quit listen to what they're saying in the marketplace. So he asked them a question. Who do men say I'm the son of man I am? And they gave him a good answer. Some say you Jeremiah. Some say you Elijah. Some say you one of the prophets. But then he brings it home. He said, who do you say? Since you hanging out with me all the time, since you you watching me heal feed the hungry, you watching me heal the sick, you watching me open blind eyes, you watching me make a way out of no way. Tell me why you hanging with me if you don't know who I am. You didn't get that in theology. You didn't get that from sitting there somebody's 
of thee. You got that because the Father in heaven revealed it to you. He said, now Peter, that's what I've been trying to tell the church. That's where I'm going to build my church. I'm going to build my church on the revelation of who I am. Then he turns around and tells him. So we think, so you got to understand something. Let me kill a this. The myth is, they thought the church was built on Peter. No. Because he called Peter separate, which means stone. What he was saying in the Hebrew or in the Greek term, that you are firm. You're a person who's very firm. You study. You, you, you're a person, you're going to make some mistake, but one thing about you, you got full conviction. And one thing about a believer who got full conviction, they're going to make a mistake, but they'll come back. Because yeah. the conviction, your conscience won't let you stay out there. That's right. That's right. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Come on, man. Your conscience ain't going to let you have skin. That's right. See, the old mothers taught me years ago, said, boy, you can't stand on the fence. That's right. Either you're in or you're out. That's right. See, the old mothers say, I came, I came up under, under, under old saints. Praise the name of the Lord. But I had to learn how to be compassionate. Because I don't think y'all can take me in my old way. Because I was strict. Just I was strict. Bro, I was strict, bro. In those days, you couldn't wear earrings. You couldn't wear no jewelry. That's true. Yeah, cuff. Had to have stuff on your head. Right. <laughs> it used to bother me to go and put toilet tissue on your head. You know, cut. <laughs> <laughs> so I came up strict. But I had to learn to have compassion. Jesus taught me compassion. The Lord taught me compassion. He said, I have compassion on you. That's right. You weren't together. But I still have compassion on you. Because I called you when you were still messed up. I called you while you were still struggling. I didn't call you when you got all the eyes and crossed all the teeth. And I'm still using you. You still ain't got all the eyes and crossed all the teeth. But you got to understand who I am. I'm the Christ. I'm the Son of the living God. I'm God in flesh. And I got power. All power. And heaven is in my hand. Glory to God. And he that come to me, I know why it's casting out. No matter who he is. He said, whoever come to me, he said, I know why it's casting out. Jesus, thank you, Lord. We got to quit finding our nose of that people. Mm. Yes, thank you, Lord. I'll tell you the story and I'll quit. I'll never finish a message. Y'all have to catch the rest of the message. There was this, there was this king. They called him something else and he was over this country. And while he was over this country, he had created a big pool in the, in the middle of his, his town because it was modern like we were uh, today. And what happened was it was a, a, a place where people could come and bathe. And, but underneath it, he had created a furnace where you feet had to feed wood or whatever to it to keep the fire burning. And there was a one man down there that kept the, the fire burning all the time. So what the king did, he took off all his kingly clothes. And he went down and spent some time with the guy who's running the furnace. And for days he ate lunch with the guy. He, he had, you know, the same lunch. The guy ate, he ate. And for weeks he was down there. For weeks and days he was down there. And one day he decided he would tell and show the guy who he was. And when, when he came down, the guy recognized him because he came down this time, he was dressed as a king. He told the guy who he was, and the guy recognized him. And the guy said, oh, my goodness. You the king, and you came down here in this dark place and hung with me for weeks and days? You came down here and lived with me? You ate the same food I ate, peasant food? He said, Yes. And he asked the king, see so what you want? He said, I don't want anything. He said, you gave me the best gift. I don't want your money. He said, I don't want clothes. I don't want things. He said, you gave me the best gift because you gave me you. Oh my God. All right. Thank you, Lord. That's what Jesus did for us. We were in a dark.
God messed up his yes. He came down and, and, and sat with us and supped with us. Thank Praise you. the name of the Lord. And most of us get saved. We think God's going to rain down all the stuff from heaven. But the greatest gift he gave me him. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. That's the greatest gift. Because the greatest gift is eternal life. And that eternal life is in Jesus Christ. I know. So with those hands lifted. Just thank God for life. Thank God for life. Thank God for life. For Jesus is life. He will wait the truth of the life. Thank God for life. We're praising God for stuff. He said, just praise me for me. For who he is. Quit praising God because you got a car. The car will get old. The clothes will get old. The shoes will get old. But Jesus never get old. Because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I know this message was get you excited and shout, but I can't even make you think that Jesus is the answer. He's the answer to you. By those hands we will to you. Father in Jesus' name, there's one here today who's not saved. Let them know who came to save Let them know that you are the answer. That you are hallelujah. You are source. And like Peter, I'm persuaded and I know you are the Christ. The Son of the living God. You died. You lived. You died. But you rose again. But we can have each other life. And I thank you right now. Someone listen to us today broadcast. I pray that they would reach up to you in their faith and open their hearts and allow you to come in and suffer. 